All right, this chapter we're going to be talking about functions, and we're going to review functions and inequalities. There's two parts to it. All right, so the first part has to do with understanding functions. So with functions, when we're talking about functions, what we do is we are, here, I'm going to put it here. Um, you learned it as putting it into an input-output table. Your input is your x-axis, and your output is going to be what's represented on your y-axis. So if I'm looking at a graph, my input is always going to be on the x-axis, and my output is always going to be on the y-axis. My input is always independent. One way to remember them is that they both begin with IN, right? And your whatever represents your output on your y-axis is dependent. Your output depends on your input. So what you could do is you can look at a graph and you can determine which one's independent or dependent. So I'm going to show you an example. So for instance, if I looked at this graph and I asked you which one's independent and which one's dependent, so they want to know, is weeks independent or dependent? And is account balance independent or dependent? So you have to ask yourself, does the account balance depend on the number of weeks you saved, or does the weeks depend on the account balance? Well, for me, when I look at weeks, weeks is on the x-axis, so it's independent. Account balance is on the y-axis, so that's going to be dependent. Your account balance is going to depend upon how many weeks that you save, right? So that's how you would look at it if you're looking at a graph. Let's do another example. Here's an example from a table, right? I want to know which, which of these, time or distance, is independent and which one's dependent. Well, time is going to be on your x-axis. Time is almost always horizontal on the x-axis. That's going to be independent, and the distance is going to be dependent. So the distance you travel is going to depend on how many hours you're going. Does that make sense? All right, let's look at another one with um, a, a graph. All right, which one's independent? So we're looking at the categories, weight lifted and repetitions completed. Okay, so which one's independent, which one's dependent? So you should be saying weight lifted is independent, it's on the x-axis, and repetitions completed is on the y-axis that's dependent. So the repetitions that you complete is dependent upon the weight that you lift. And that makes sense, right? Because the heavier the weight, wouldn't there be fewer and fewer repetitions? Okay, so that's the first part. We also talked about the four ways we represent functions. Four ways we represent, I call it the rule of four, right? You can see it in a word problem or in a picture. We can write a function as a rule or an equation. Y equals something with X where you apply an operation or multiple operations, like Y equals 2X plus 7, or Y equals X minus 2. You can also put it in a table, an XY table, and because you can put it in a table, you can graph it because you're going to have an independent and a dependent variable. You're going to be able to graph your X and your Y because you're going to have a table. The tables and the graph go hand in hand. So if you can complete a table, you can then graph it. And if you have a graph, you're going to have your, your ordered pair, your x and your y, you're going to be able to put it in a table. You can also figure out what the function rule is a number of ways. So I'm going to go on the inside of here. All right. So when you're looking at a table and you're trying to figure out what the rule is, what you're going to do is you're always going to go from your x to your y. I guess it's best if I write it down. So I want to find what the rule is, the function rule is. So if I gave you a table, it looked like this. This is um, time and this is distance. So if I did 0 and 0, 1 and 70, 2 and 140, 3 and um, 210. And I said to you, OK, find the function rule. When you find the function rule, it's always your independent. This is like your x, this is like your y, right? So when you graph it, time will always go here, and distance will go on your y-axis. So when you look at this, you're always going from your x to your y, and you're looking at what's happening. 
right? Sometimes it's a simple rule where you're just adding, subtracting, multiplying, or dividing. Other times it's going to be a two-step rule. So if I looked at this, I'm going to write it y equals, well, actually I'm using t and d. Um, so your distance, well, I'll do it both ways. Um, if you look, 0 to 0, you're no, you know you're not adding or subtracting. 1 to 70 is either adding 69 or multiplying by 70. 2 to 140, 3 to 110, it looks like the rule is multiply by 70. So if the rule is multiply by 70, the way you would write that rule is your distance is equal to 70 times your time. If I used y and x, y equals 70x. They just want it, in this case, they wanted us to use time and distance, t and d. All right, so that's how you write the rule. You, when you're writing the rule, you're always going from your x to your y, okay? Other things that are important um, in this chapter were inequalities. So when we're talking about inequalities, we're talking about using these symbols, right? Greater than, less than, greater than. Now, if I underline it, it's greater than or equal to. And if I do this symbol and underline it, it's less than or equal to. All right, and then we talked about the words that represented greater than, less than, greater than or equal to, less than or equal to. Check your notes for that. One of the most important ones under greater than or equal to is the words at least. At least, students see least, they think it means less than. No, at least means greater than or equal to. And at most means less than or equal to. Students always confuse those. All right. When we are writing inequalities, there's a certain format that you need to follow. Now these come from your notes, right? You have your variable first, then you have your inequality sign, and then you have the number that's in the problem. Don't change the number that's in the problem. So with an inequality, the solutions, there's gonna be many of them. So for instance, if I looked at this, x is greater than five, so x has to be anything bigger than five. So it's, the answers are gonna be infinite. They're gonna go on forever and ever. So an example of this would be six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. It's gonna go on forever, infinity. If you see that it's written in the wrong format where the number is written first and the variable's on the other side, you need to rewrite it. And the way you rewrite it is you put the X on the other side and the number on the other side, you flip them. But when you do that, you gotta switch the inequality sign to, its op to the opposite side. Okay, so if I wrote five is less than X, I have to rewrite that because remember, proper format is I want you to start with the variable, then do the inequality sign, then do the number. So switch these X, the five goes on the other side. Because this was less than, I'm gonna switch this to greater than. Okay, so make sure that you follow the steps. Look at your notes for writing inequalities. We also talked about how to graph inequalities. And we said when you're graphing inequalities, right, you have to make sure it's in proper format. You're gonna draw a number line, and then you have to decide, is it open circle or solid dot? Okay, so if it's just greater than or just less than, meaning they're not underlined or equal to, you're gonna use an open circle. If they're underlined, meaning or equal to, so this would be greater than or equal to or less than or equal to, you use a solid dot on the number, right? And then you have to attach a line with an arrow in the direction that the answers are going. So if it's greater than, they're going to go to the right. So greater than and greater than or equal to, your answers are going to the right. And I said to you, one quick thing that you could do, create a, put a line in between the inequality sign here. Look, this is the end of the arrow. This is the way it's pointing. And for less than and less than or equal to, you're gonna be drawing a line with an arrow going to the left because if I stuck a line with an arrow in there, it's pointing in the direction left. Okay, so in the example, x is less than, is greater than nine. All right, it's greater than, so I'm gonna do an open circle on the nine. You don't change the number. And since it's greater than, you're gonna to go to the right. All right, so let's just do some examples that you had to do for um, your work. All right, let's pull it out. All right, here we go. 
All right, so you had to answer these questions, right? And I'm going to make it a little bit bigger so we can see it maybe a little bit bigger, hopefully. Okay, here we go. So number two. Number two says, what is the rule to find the value of the missing term in the table? All right, so when they use position and value of the term, this is your x, this is your y. And remember, you're always going from your x to your y when you're finding the rule. So the x is here, the y is here. This time we're going to go this way. And you're going to look at the pattern to see what's happening. So you're going 1 to 5. So you're getting bigger, so you're either adding 4 or multiplying by 5. So now look at the second term. The rule has to be the same for everything in the box, right, in the table. So it looks like you're multiplying by 5. So which of these shows that you're multiplying by 5? G. The correct way of writing this rule would have been y equals 5x if we were using x and y. If I have the nth term, this is going to be 5n, 5 times whatever n is. All right, for number 3. For number 3, you had to write the rule from the graph. All right, now remember, graph and tables go together. So if you have a graph, create a table. And then from the table, you can figure it out. So I'm going to put x and I'm going to put y. So I'm going to read the points. So my first point is 0, 3. Then at 1, it looks like I'm at 5. At 2, it looks like I'm at 7. At 3, it looks like I'm at 9. And I could keep going, right? So I have to figure out which of these is the rule. Now, since this is a multiple choice question, they make it easier for me. So I'm going from 0 to 3. Is that times 2? Nope. 0 to 3, is that times 3? Nope. All right. Is it 2 times x plus 3? So let's try that. So I'm using 2x plus 3. So I'm going to plug in x is 0, so 2 times 0, plus 3. Well, 2 times 0 is 0, plus 3 is 3. So that worked. Now I'm going to plug in x is 1. Remember, it has to work for all of these numbers. 2 times 1 plus um, 3. So 2 times 1 is 2, plus 3 is 5. Yep, that worked. It looks like this might be the answer. 2x plus 3. Let's try one more. All right, so 2 times my x is 2 plus 3. 2 times 2 is 4. 4 plus 3 is 7. So the answer is going to be C. So if they give you a graph, put it in a table, and then try to use the answers to help you. All right, so this one wants to know which inequality is graphed. All right, so it's pointing to the left, and it's a solid dot. So I know it's less than, and I know it's or equal to, because it's a solid dot. The number in the problem is 15. So I know all I have to do is put a variable here. Variable inequality sign number. So the answer is H. All right, now for this, it wants to know which of the following is the solution of this inequality. So what you're going to do is you're going to substitute the numbers in and see which ones work. Plug the numbers in. All right, so I'm going to try that. So I'm going to start first with 34. I'm going to do 34 take away 12. 34 take away 12 is 22. Is 22 less than 20? Nope. All right, now I'm going to try 33. If I plug in 33, 33 minus 12 is, it looks like 21. Is 21 less than 20? Nope. So you know that's not the answer. Let's try 32. So is 32 take away 12 less than 20? Well, is 20 less than 20? Nope. So the answer's got to be D. And let's see. If I plug in 31, 31 take away 12. I'm going to do it over here because I'm running out of room. Uh, sorry, 31 take away 12 is 19. Is 19 less than 20? Yes. So that's why the answer is D. All you have to do is substitute the numbers in to see which ones fit. So the answer to that was D. All right, now for number six, it says, which of the following inequalities has a solution shown below? All right, so let's read this first. I need to make that a little bit bigger. There we go. All right, so when I read this, I know the answers are pointing to the right. I know it's a solid dot, so I know it's or equal to. So the X has to be greater than four. 
That's the solution. I got to figure out which one of these, when I solve it, is gr x is greater than or equal to 4. All right, now first of all, I could just eliminate answers because look, this is just greater than, I know it's not that. This is greater than or equal to, so that might work. This is less than or equal to, that's not going to work. And this is less than. So just by eliminating, looking at the inequality sign, I know it's going to be g. But let's look at y. All right, so I have 6n is greater than or equal to 24. So you solve these just like you do equations, right? This is a multiplication inequality. So to solve it, divide by 6. When you divide by 6, this becomes 1. 1 times n is n is greater than or equal to 4. And that's exactly what we get here when we looked at that. All right. Number seven and eight, we have to solve the inequalities. Remember, you solve like an equation. Okay, so I'm going to do this one over here. So I have C take away seven is less than or equal to 10. I have to try to squeeze that in, right? Okay, so I like to do a double line for the inequalities to keep it in. All right, circle the variable. You have to undo the take away seven, so you're going to add seven to both sides. This cancels out, you're left with C is less than or equal to 17. So which one gives me that answer? C is less than or equal to 17? Well, it's got to be D. If you looked at this example, you already knew that C wasn't the answer and B wasn't the answer because it was greater than or equal to. Your inequality sign was less than or equal to, so it could have been either this or this. All right, now let's do this one. 4B... 4 times b is greater than 20. we got to solve it. All right, so this is a multiplication inequality. And again, double line to separate the two sides. This is multiplication, so you have to divide on both sides. Remember, what you do to one side, you do to the other. 4 over 4 is 1. 1 times b is b is greater than 20 divided by 4 is 5. So the answer is, it looks like, f. You solve them just like equations. All right, going to the back. All right, what they want us to do is they want us to find the rule for number 13. So remember, the position is always your x, the value of the term is your y. This is input, this is output. Always go from your x to your y and see what's happening. And it has to be the same for all of them. So I want you to find the rule. So look, you're getting smaller, so it looks like you're taking away 6 or you're dividing by 3. Well, if I look here, this is take away 6, take away 6, take away 6. So if this is n, this is n minus 6. So the rule is x take away 6. That's how you would write it. So y equals x take away 6. Then it says, well, they didn't ask us that, but number 15. The summer cap charges $25 plus, so plus, an additional $5 each day. Oh, not $5, $10 each day. Ten, I'm going to use X for days. So we have to figure out an equation that represents this scenario. Well, there's this scenario right there. Y equals 25 plus 10X. That's what I'm going to put here. Y equals 25 plus 10X. All I did was take the words. 25 fee plus $10 each day. Each day is times X, so 10X. All right, then it says it wants us to graph this. All right, so if they give us the rule, I can create that very simply, right? What I'm going to do is I'm going to assign some values for x. So let's say I use 0, 1, 2, 3. Let's make it easy. And all I do is I substitute the values in for x, right? I could always do the, the math over here. So I'm going to plug in 0. So x is 0. So this is 25 plus 10 times 0 is 0. So this is just 25. All right, now I'm going to plug in x is 1. 10 times 1 is 10. Add 25 is 35. Remember, you got to do the multiplying first, right, PEMDAS? All right, x is 2. 10 times 2 is 20. 20 plus 25 is 45. You get the pattern. You can see you're, multiple, you're adding 10 each time as you go down. 
So now when I graph this, so let's say this is zero, this is one, this is two, this is three. And I don't know, let's go by, I don't know, let's go by, well, I guess we could go by tens, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, so I'm gonna be in between. So I have zero and 25. Zero, 25. So this is 10, this is 20. 25 is right in between 20 and 30. Then one and 35. One and 35 in between 30 and 40. Then two and 45 in between 40 and 50. And three and 55 in between 50 and 60. So notice it's linear. Right, number 16, it says, Hugo is buying DVDs that cost $10, $15 each, and he has a coupon for $5 off. Hmm. It says, write an equation to find C, the total amount, so C equals, that he's going to spend on any number of DVDs D. All right, so it's $15 for each DVD. And then he has a coupon for $5 off. So isn't that minus 5? So the equation would be 15D take away 5. See, using their variables that they told us to do. $15 per DVD, and then you have a coupon, so you're going to subtract 5. Now they want us to do it if D equals 6. So I'm going to plug in D equals 6 here. So I have to do 15 times 6 take away 5. Well, 15 times 6, I'm going to do it over here. 15 times 6, 3 is 90. So 90 take away 5 is just 85. So the cost would be $85. Okay, number 20. They want to know 4 times what is greater than 52? Which of these is a solution, 12, 13, or 14? So what you have to do is plug them in and see which one's true. All right, so I'm going to do 4 times 12. 4 times 12 is 48. Is 48 greater than 52? No. Then I'm going to do 13, 4 times 13. Well, 4 times 13, 12 carry the 1, is 52. Is 52 greater than 52? No. So the answer must be 14. 4 times 14 is it looks like 56 is 56 greater than 52 yes so the answer is 14 you got to plug the number in for x and see what makes the inequality true number 20 write an inequality to repre represent the statement the band will practice no longer than well that to me no longer than 45 minutes means less than or equal to you can go up to 45 minutes. So, I don't know, we'll just use x. So x is less than or equal to 45. If I were to graph this, so I'm going to start at 45. Solid dot, because it's less than or equal to. And then I'm going to draw a line with an arrow going to the left, because it's less than or equal to. And I'm going to fill in the numbers all around it. So 43, 42, this would be what, 46? And that's how you would graph it. So that's a review of functions and inequalities and their solutions.